Hi, this is Irene from the University of Calgary. In this video, I'm going to go over to use a power Doppler and how it can be applied in uh, doing a paracentesis. There really are three main types of Doppler. There's the color Doppler, the spectral or pulse wave Doppler, and then lastly, the power Doppler. This video is really only going to go over power Doppler. Um, but all Doppler modalities rely on the Doppler principle, which is named after this guy, Christian Doppler, an Austrian physicist. The basic premise is this. Um, in uh, imaging a stationary object, the transducer sends out a, a sound wave of certain frequency, and the same frequency bounces off the object back into the transducer. However, if the object is actually moving, and in this case moving towards the transducer, the frequency that gets sent out, it's lower than the frequency that comes back, which is a higher frequency. Um, the converse is also true where the um, object is, if it's moving away from the transducer, uh, the transducer is going to send out a frequency of a certain uh, uh, wavelength and, and frequency, and the sound wave that comes back is now actually going to be lower. Um, so this is really the, um, the, the reason behind the phenomenon that we observe when an ambulance is coming towards us. It gets higher pitched, and when it's moving away from us, the pitch then lowers. So from the transducer's perspective, all it's looking for is the difference between what frequency was being sent out and what came back to it. So this delta, or the Doppler shift, is what's going to tell the transducer that something is in fact moving. So that's the basic principle that underlies all types of Doppler, but we're going to concentrate on power Doppler for the moment. So Power Doppler has a few advantages. Um, number one, it's extremely sensitive to low flow. Um, and secondly, it's not subject to aliasing. So it requires a little bit less fiddling on our part when we're scanning. There are some disadvantages to it. One is that it does not give information about direction of the, the blood flow. And secondly, it doesn't tell us anything about the velocity of the blood flow. However, if all I'm interested in, in performing a paracentesis, is that whether or not there is a blood vessel underneath my needle, power Doppler is the way to go. I don't really need to know what direction the vessel is going, and I don't really care what velocity it's, it's uh, running at. And uh, in fact, I often don't know what direction my collateral uh, blood vessels are running in. And if I was to use color or pulse wave Doppler, um, I could potentially miss the uh, misidentifying a blood vessel because I'm not imaging at an appropriate angle. So, so for using those two, I do need to know what direction the blood vessels are going. Um, so power Doppler definitely has that advantage, is that it's irrelevant which direction it's going. All it's detecting is movement. And because all it's detecting is movement, one of the downsides is that it's very, very sensitive to movement. Um, so if, say, I'm over-caffeinated or I can't control my tremor, then any movement is going to cause the whole s screen to light up and it'd be very difficult to interpret. Let's go over the steps in using power Doppler. Um, I tend to use a linear transducer uh, for most patients. Um, curvilinear, you can probably get away with it, especially in, in uh, patients with higher BMI or thicker abdominal um, wall um, uh, areas. Uh, but in general, the linear transducer does offer higher resolution, so that would probably be the preferred transducer. So in step one, um, when you start imaging the the, uh, uh, the abdominal wall, you're going to see the uh, skin and subcutaneous area and then the, uh, the musculature. And then here is the bright white uh, hyperechoic line. Uh, note, there is no ascites in this image here, so I certainly wouldn't do a, a paracentesis on this patient, but this is really for illustration purposes. Um, either case, what, uh, you, what you'll notice is that this is the area I'm interested in and hiding way up at the screen. So what step one is to really decrease the depth so that the area of interest is going to be easily seen. Um, and then once you've done that, you're going to turn on power Doppler and invariably you're going to have to move the box because it's never where you need it to be. So in this case, it's a little too low. Um, I'm seeing only this part of the abdominal uh, wall. So I need to kind of move it up. I'm sorry, there, like so. And I would want to increase the size 
uh, of the uh, box so that it captures the entire area that I'm interested in. And then step three is to hold still. And as I, as I indicated before, any movement is going to uh, make the whole screen flash with artifacts. Um, so once you hold still there, um, there are a few more steps that you want to, um, uh, to undertake. One is that it doesn't look like there's a clear vasculature here, but it could be that my um, uh, post repetition frequency or PRF is uh, set in incorrectly. So for all in terms of purposes, all you need to know is that high PRF will detect high flow and low PRF will detect low flow. So right now it's set at 1.7 kilohertz. So step four is then to lower it. So here I have PRF set at the lowest, which is 0.3. And you can see already that a lot more things, a lot more uh, things are lighting up because of movement. Um, and um, that will allow me to detect any potential uh, vasculature. The next step um, that we then is to ensure that our gain is optimized. So here I'm starting out at 78%. What I then want to do is to then increase the gain to, in this case, 100%. I make everything on my screen bleed, and then I'm going to slowly crank the gain down until it's just um, above the level of random noise. Um, and once I've done that, what I can see here is that I can see a little bit of persistent um, signal that seems not to go away. Most of these other areas are not consistent and they kind of come and go. So that suggests to me these are artifacts, but this one does make me worry. And in real life, if I was to do a procedure, I would probably move my needle elsewhere just to avoid this uh, region. So let's say in the um, you have decided that you're going to do a perf uh, perform a paracentesis in the left lower quadrant here. What then you would do is to really just kind of scan that region to make sure that there is no vasculature underneath. Um, where you plan to uh, stick your needle. Uh, but even better yet, I would suggest that uh, you, m you scan through a larger region. So what I typically do is to kind of scan above the area, on the area, and also below the area, just to really make sure that there's no vasculature near my needle. Um, the vasculature that we're most worried about is the inferior epigastric pain, uh, in inferior epigastric vessels, which runs off of the... Uh, the uh, external iliac and uh, runs up like so. And you can see there are branches off of this. It's also a paired vessel. In general, it's going to run uh, within five centimeter from midline, um, but certainly uh, you know, one could develop collateral vessels as well. Um, what it would look like on B-mode imaging here is that you can see that at the um, deep side to the abdominus rectus muscle, you can see a pulsating vessel paired with likely its vein right there. Um, with a peritoneum right underneath it. And then throwing on Doppler, this is what that would look like. And again, is this persistent signal that we're looking for that tells me that there's a blood vessel running underneath. Here, these are random movement artifacts. As the bow is moving, it kind of lights up. And you can see that these are not consistent, whereas this signal definitely is. So take-home messages wise, um, power Doppler is extremely useful for uh, for do for procedure at making sure that the area you want to stick your needle in is avascular. The steps in doing power Doppler is first you want to optimize your depth. S secondly, you're going to turn on the power Doppler and adjust the box to the area that you're interested in. You have to hold still, then lower the PRF then increase the Doppler gain. I usually increase it way up and then slowly come back down. Um, and thanks for tuning in. Please check uh, back on our website for any additional tutorials and cases.